Hello guys welcome to my humble YouTube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. Spatial thank to Diamond Wolf the author of this story. Chapter 18. Hiro Masayuki appears and ends. Masayuki Pav. Three years ago. Three years ago was when I first came to this world and three years ago was when this fake me had first appeared. I was on my way home from school after I had finished and I thought I heard a noise behind me so I turned around and I saw a fountain and large people with muscles, people with staffs it was as if I was in a fantasy world, I turned around again to see if I could go back bit all I saw was a bar so I decided to go in but I bumped into a woman who was running out asking for help and then hid behind me and then I saw a massive guy standing above me with a huge claymore. Huh? Who the hell ate you? The guy asks drunkenly. Poor boy, that man is a B-ranked adventurer right? That boy's is so dead. Uh, um, hi? Masayuki said feeling extremely intimidated. Get out of my way. He says then swings his sword but Masayuki wouldn't move as he for some reason felt courageous and wanted to protect the lady and as the sword was about to hit his neck he moved forwards and punched him in the stomach sending him back inside the bar. Who is that boy? He managed to take out a B-ranked easily. Is that the hero? It must be. Then suddenly Masayuku heard something inside of his head saying, Individual Masayuki has gained unique skill, Chosen One. Continuing. Effects of Chosen One. Heroes Hockey. A passive aura of positivity making all believe individual to be the greatest. Continuing. Effects of Chosen One. Heroes Charisma. Individual's charisma is raised drastically and gives all around him a boost in charisma along with targeted individual continuing. Effects of Chosen One. Hero's action. Gives individual the boost in confidence to take action to do what individual believes is the best cause of action continuing. Effects of chosen on hero's blessing. Give individual the ability to give a blessing to party members, subordinates raising all stats and giving each a unique skill of their own to use. Higher one's abilities or the higher one's targeted individual skills are. Huh. What is this? Did I really get summoned to another world? But where is the king that is meant to give me advice? Also do I have to fight a demon lord or a super powerful dragon or something? Masayuki thinks as his mind goes all over the place after hearing this notification from inside his head. That was three years ago. In these three years I have gained three party members namely, Jinrai the man who I punched, Bernie who was looking for a party and was introduced to me by the free guild in Ju who at first called me a scumbag but soon worshipped me and my party is currently called, the Shinning and we quickly made our way up to a ranked party and we never lost a battle as for our abilities. Jinrai as C but with abilities of B Bernie is a rank. Ju as B rank Masayuki is a rank and is a champion. Three are close to evolving to hero saints which is the second highest human evolutions with Masayuki being human saint already with Jinrai's abilities and Bernie's training they could easily and safely clear all missions they took on with Bernie also being another worlder with Masayuki they also got on very well in there. Most recent mission from Yuki was to save slave beastmen. Who were kidnapped from the Jura forest and the king. From the country they saved them from requested they. Take the beastmen to the Jura forest as they were too. Scared to enter a demon lord's territory and they paid Masayuki's party twice the amount agreed happen so they quickly agreed but Yuki didn't want them to go but Bernie Ju and Jinrai thought that Masayuki could take down even the strongest demon lord due to the effects of his skill. Chosen one. Everyone thinks he is the greatest along with the effect of it he has incredible luck but against someone who transcends luck such as true demon lords he is nothing but child's play. Masayuki Sama is the greatest no demon lord could ever hope to touch him, says Ju while jumping at Yuki. Maybe but did you forget that the demon lord's territory who you were entering fought evenly with Hanada Sakaguchi? Yuki throws back. Ha. Huh. You think that she could beat Masayuki Sama? He could beat her up with no difficulty, she shouts back. Fine fine, just don't die, Yuki says giving up, sigh. I don't want to do this. Ah I wish if God was real he would send me back to Japan. Masayuki says in his mind but steals himself as nothing so far has gone wrong so why would it begin now ha. 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 Velzard Pav these past few days have gone smoothly only two more days till we open up to the rest of the world some nobles have already arrived ahead of time as Tempest is already a worldwide name not just due to the fact that its ruler is a demon lord but because of its comfort and luxury it provides even its commoners and its trade with Eurasania giving them abundance of fresh fruits for beer. 
wine so on so forth it also has the best food with foods from the other worlds such as ramen pizza burgers even chips and cereals along with foods from this world such as meat from megalodons and grade a bull deer which is considered noble food which is sold cheap to commoner due to being in a forest full of monsters from f to special a unless you include velzard subordinates or velzard herself but they're all held back by the guard who are goblins infused with the glacial wolves which are basically just goblin bodies attached to the wolves with their legs inside the wolves body but it makes it harder to knock the goblin off the wolf and they can attack in sync and since each goblin and wolf have their partners they have their own style of fighting so they can coordinate everything making them effective fighters and since they have 2000 goblins and 5000 wolves they work as a good advance force for if war is ever needed a n you may have noticed I often lose track of what I'm writing and end up writing useless stuff such as that but it could also explain stuff for anime watchers only so I guess it's not completely useless. Lady Velzard, says Zoe appearing from the shadows kneeling. What's wrong? It seems that a human champion and his party is headed to Tempest, Sue says. Oh? And what is his name? Asks Velzard, Masayuki, his party's name is, the Shining, being an A-rank party, Sue answers. Oh Masayuki? Didn't Kenya say something about him? Ah right the lightning flash hero Masayuki. Velzard says remembering what Kenya was talking about during a picnic they all took while she was teaching. I should also probably pick those kids up since Yuki did say I could bring them for the festival, she mutters. Would you like us to do something? Asks Sue. Yes you can bring him to me since if a champion is headed for Tempest we can't just ignore it as humans consider champions possible candidates for heroes. Velzard says as Sue disappears to bring the news to Masayuki and brings him to meeting which after two hours they arrive. I suppose you're the champion Masayuki and his party? Velzard asks looking at the blonde boy with yellow clothing. Oi kneel before Masayuki, says Jinrai, hum, kneel? Why should I kneel to a champion? I would only ever kneel to my older brother and even then I would be hesitant, Velzard says while her subordinates leak some of their aura causing the three behind Masayuki to fall flat but Masayuki on one knee forcing him to kneel. I I ask for your forgiveness in Jinrei actions, says Masayuki trying to keep from falling to the ground since if he does then he believes his whole support network would leave him believing he is weak not knowing the effects of the skill chosen one. Masayuki Sama Jinrei mutters and starts tearing up believing he caused trouble for Masayuki and him having to clear up his mess. Diablo, she and your aura is seeping out, Velzard says and they quickly bring it back in and Masayuki's party could breath again and Masayuki stood back up again and then Ju challenged Velzard to fight to the death being Masayuki versus Velzard who accepted under the condition they did it at the arena during the festival and they left leaving Diablo, Sheehan and Velzard in the room. Lady Velzard may I have the honor of playing with these foolish humans, Diablo says with a smile but his aura could tell you everything. No no please let me have this honor, says Sheehan holding the hilt of her claymore which steals the souls of anyone it kills and Sheehan can manipulate what happens to them. I'll take care of this, after all I had accepted didn't I? If they wish to fight I will fight if they wish to die I will kill them, Velzard says with a smile but decided against killing them since they could be useful in the future due to their status as champions Velzard could make Masayuki have many favors owed and then she could manipulate the whole world using Masayuki alone if she so wanted without having to do anything herself though she would only use Masayuki against the empire. Masayuki pav crap 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 what do I do? Ju just got me into a fight against that demon lord. Her subordinates' strengths were nothing to laugh at either. Those auras were so large I only survived because of my hero's hockey which gives me a positive effect but even that stood no chance against those auras and I felt like they were still holding back. I am going to die today. Nope nope nope. I want to run. Curse you Jew. They won't left me out of their sight either so I can't run away. I have no choice but to fight that demon lord. And in front of so many people as well. My whole harrowing career has met its end hasn't it? Chapter 19. Festival starts Velzard Pav two days after Masayuki and his party left and practically declared war on me the festival has officially started with the first people arriving being nobles from all different countries. They were all boring and none of them particularly strong with a few ranking guards with them, quite a few also were looking at me lustfully but Sheehan and Diablo's glare scared them and them left instantly without even greeting their host such rude people I must say. As I was starting to get bored a familiar face appeared. You sure look bored Lady Velzard, greeted Gazel. Ah King Gazel it has been a while. 
These guys are all too boring. None of them are strong or interesting, replies Velzard. Ha ha. Well that is the life for the strong and wise unfortunately, Gazel says in agreement. Anyway you saved me a special seat right? A hey, why would I do that? Velzard replies. Ha 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 that's just like you, anyways have a fun time, he says as he walks away. I suppose I should start the banquet now that people have settled down, we have prepared this feast perfectly and so I shall try my best to make this speech good. I will start of with saying it is my pleasure to welcome you all here today, as you may know my name is the Demon Lord Rimuru, I would like today to be free from serious topics and instead direct you towards our nation's dishes to which I hope you will enjoy, long speeches aren't really my strong point so I apologize for keeping it short, and let the party begin. Velzard announces and the food servers all come in and server the food in a polite manner and full of sincerity. Each table was assigned waiters and were strictly by Vesta. Everything had been laid out perfectly pitting to show their intense education. I called for a toast and finished my greetings the eve of the festival had been put to motion. Gasps of awe washed through the crowds as they tasted their beer as they had only poorly carbonated beer when Tempest beer was top quality even for Earth's standards. The waiters were all elven ladies and no I didn't force them they had all voluntarily signed up however this was another success beautiful elven ladies roaming around serving alcohol and the way the elves greeted them made all of the men whether they were drunk or not turn red. Men are always like this now that I think about it. Back when I was a man I had an elf fetish didn't I? Oh how laughable I was back then, I even thought creating a country between monsters and humans was an easy feat. The extravagant dishes were prepared by both Shuna and Yoshida who I'd say are the two finest chefs in the cardinal world. We also managed to prepare a sherbet made with an assortment of fruits as refreshments, even going so far as to recreate like the black tiger meat and more from Walpurgis Banquet. Although we had a hard time looking for monsters we could use as ingredients we somehow managed in two days using the information we had. I'd say we managed to satisfy the nobles and aristocrats who were used to high-end foods. That wasn't all. Off to the side you could see one of the large fishes I had accidentally fished up being carted in. If I remember correctly from the past it had an amazing flavor so I decided to bring it in. Hakuro was left in charge of cutting it up to be served, we decided to make it a show as Hakuro's cutting abilities are not to be underestimated. His kitchen knife which was handcrafted by Kurobe one of the two finest blacksmiths in Tempest flew from one side to another cutting with precision no other could recreate avoiding the hard exoskeleton Amor while the fish was being cut into a beautiful display of artistic skill which even Shuna was astonished with. Behind me Sheehan stood there with a kitchen knife I gifted her for her to practice with and was eagerly starring wanting to join, in which I told her not to almost instantly in fear of my life. We had invited many big names to this party and had to make this as nice as possible and not be put into the hands of an untrained cook who can make even the nicest looking things look like something even demons would hate to even smell. As for the reactions as expected at first people were scared by Hikuro's skills however as his performance progressed many lightened up and shined with admiration for him. The head was discarded, and the body dived up into four pieces, then sliced up as the plates were loaded. In the middle laid marbled belly meat enveloped in red meat. The sight alone in the past would most likely have me watering however after running a country for ten years I have refined my manners and managed to keep myself back from pouncing on it and eating it whole. The majority of people remained silent and hesitant waiting for someone to make the first move. Many people had gathered at the buffet tables at the standing party section. The dishes were all well received, and people were singing their praises. After all Shuna and Yoshida were pulling out all of the stops. I just nodded after all a kind reception was to be expected. People still after a while were hesitant on taking any of the fish meat, maybe they were intimidated by Hikuro's display people were even saying it would taste bad so I decided to take the initiative. I shall try one, I say and Hikuro passes me a plate. I hope it is to your tasting my lady, he says and backs off with a bow. As soon as I take a bite it was as though heaven came to personally greet me, the flavors were all perfectly mixed and the buttery belly meat melts in the mouth complemented by each other brings it together. It's delicious, I say and ask for a second plate. It's a shame it hadn't be too well received but I am looking forwards to post dinner drinks, I say while looking at Hakuro and company soon Womeom from the crowd speaks up. CS and I have sushi with that belly meat and also without the wasabi, Hanada says while walking over. Someone turned up and left a comment that left me dumbfounded, 
Not only did she straight up ask for belly meat she also asked for it without wasabi. What are you, a kid? I say while looking at her. Shut up. I hate that burning sensation in my nose, she shouts back. Hanada who wore a simple evening dress and asked for sushi as though it was natural. I would also like if there was a wider variety of fish, she states. As if that wasn't enough, she stepped it up with such a cocky request. Not only did she want the wasabi to be removed, but also more kinds of fish. Surely, the wasabi part could be a difference in preference, granted, it could be hard to handle for people trying it for the first time. I believed that you could only say that you were eating it properly, if you knew how to relish the taste of wasabi. Although she was like that she still received the plate from Hakuro, she closed her eyes as she put the sushi in her mouth. Amazing. I'm a tinny bit angry but I respect you Rimuru. Then I'll have one too. But I'm not a child so you can keep the wasabi. Yuki says following behind Hanada, he dropped light sarcastic remarks. He had likely been watching us from the start from the buffet area. As he received the plate from Hakuras he immediately shoved the sushi into his mouth and also had nothing but compliments for Hakuru's food. Lady Rimuru may I try that as well? King Gazel had asked and Hakuras brought a plate over for Gazel and Yum's party who was next to him who ate in delight. Seeing both Gazel's and Yum's reactions everyone else sprang in to get a bite of the food. After that the festival proceeded without much complaint. However after a while of peace and promoting a few of Tempest's goods a guard came in. We have big trouble. He shouts, what is it? I ask open double angle bracket there shouldn't be any problems. The only thing I am sending is Elmija's ship in the sky arriving. Reporting. The sorcerer dynasty dragon king has arrived, the guard shouted frantically as another one entered. Her majesty queen Elmesia Elor Sarian is coming here herself right now. He shouts as the one next to him continue. Her imperial majesty and his intruge have arrived, he also shouts panicked. Hum. So Sarian's empress arrived a little late is that all? I ask and get dumbfounded looks, don't scare me like that, I mumble which prompts Gazel to come over to me. You don't seem to know how much this party will change with her arriving, he says as he looks at me. What do you mean? I get that the humans will probably panic but I invited her here and since I'm a demon lord now it is natural she would be curious and come here herself is it not? I ask. You invited one of the biggest people in the world who if took a single step out of their empire could cause the whole country to go into uproar, he says whispering while shouting. Yeah of course I mean why not? I ask while looking at his dumbfounded face however it was too late for him to continue as she entered the party room. Elmija had declared herself a descendant of God and revived the whole of Sarian which was thirteen kingdoms all combined into one, it is an elven dynasty with her at the top of it. Its power is similar to Dwargon's and also uses the same flaw that Dwargon does against the western nations to keep it alive despite falling behind on military power. It is nice to finally meet you demon lord Rimuru, Elmija says with authority that consumes the nobles that had all parted for her however it leaves no effect on me. Likewise, it is nice to meet a great empress such as yourself. I say in reply and look at the man next to her, I didn't think Aren's father was so close to such great royalty such as yourself. Well we have foods that we may think will appetize you and your comrades over here, I say as I motion towards the middle of the crowd the buffet area. We also have a few prepared food that will be served in a moment. Thank you. I will go and have a look since from what I can see these foods like very nice, she says and walks over to the buffet area. After that commotion I went back and had a talk with Yum and Gazel about random stuff and then I felt a familiar aura coming this way. Oh it seems our guests have arrived, I said which confused anyone who heard me. Ah Milam she will spruce up this evening, says Yum probably used to all the craziness and caught on quickly. I see so the demon lords have arrived, says Gazel also slowly getting used to the craziness and started to observe them with his keen eye. Yum's words had tipped him off however many recognized her. It was to be expected since Benamaru, Diablo, Geld and even Gabel were there acting as guides. This seemed to make Gazel tense seeing ten powerful people including Milam. She was in the lead flanked by two men. One was bald and wore a priest's gown who was known as Midley and next to him was a less serious looking person who also wore a priest's gown also known as Hermes with Midley being strong enough to be respected by Benamaru despite being fodder compared to him he still managed to impress him so I might have a look at this Midley guy later on. 
Behind them were the three beast Keters who had joined nations with Melims after Carrion started to work under Melim along with Carrion and Frey in front of beast Keters forming a shape with Melim at the point of the triangle Carrion and Frey at the front end of the triline with the three beast Keters in the middle and Midley and Hermes at the back. That damn table smasher dared to come back, I muttered but held myself back people had trouble hiding their nervousness with Melim, Elmesia, Gazel and me all in one room and knowledge of more arriving that they don't know of a few had pissed their pants and went to get changed.